Okay, so now that we know the overall structure of the retina, let's zoom in and look at the cells that make it up. So the retina is just a big sheet that lines the inside of the eyeball, and it's made up of four layers of cells. The layer that is closest to the light path is the ganglion cell layer, and then below that we have there's the ganglion cell layer, and below that the inner nuclear layer, and then below that the outer nuclear layer. And then finally this pigmented epithelium is just the, uh, the layer of cells that sort of forms the boundary um, with the sclera. So there are three layers of cells, so three types of cells that make up each layer. The ganglion cell layer is called that because it is made of ganglion cells. They're retinal ganglion cells. And then the outer nuclear layer is made up of these specialized cells called bipolar cells. They're called bipolar because the cell body only has two processes. One of which you would call a dendrite, one of which you might call an axon. So they only have two uh, processes that way. And then the inner nuclear layer consists of the photoreceptor cells. These are the cells that actually detect light and convert it into an action potential. Inside the outer nuclear layer there are two other kinds of cells, these amacrine cells and horizontal cells. They're important for processing within the retina, which we'll talk about later. This is how the cells of the retina are connected to each other. So the photoreceptors, even though they're at the bottom, they are the cells that actually detect light. So we'll talk about that more later. But the photoreceptors have these um, outer segments that contain the photopigments that are going to react to light and create the transduction mechanism. And then they synapse directly with these bipolar cells. And then the bipolar cells synapse directly with the retinal ganglion cells. So the general direction of information flow is like this. Then the retinal ganglion cells send their uh, information to the brain via the optic nerve, which we'll talk about that later too. And so these amacrine cells and, by, and horizontal cells, their main job is communication within the retina. So they allow the horizontal cells to be connected to each other um, and to some extent the ganglion cells as well. The retina is more or less uniform, um, except for some important uh, uh, spots. So we've already talked about how the fovea is right at the center of the visual field, and it turns out that the fovea actually forms a little divot, so that's the reason you can see it when you look at the surface of the retina. And the purpose of this divot is probably to allow light to pass directly to the photoreceptors that are at the center or at, at the fovea without having to pass through the other layers. So all the other layers, all the other cells uh, that are not in the fovea, if light comes in uh, to the fovea, it goes straight to those photoreceptors. But if light comes in and hits a cell not in the fovea, it's not a very straight line, but you get the idea it has to pass through all these other layers first. And in fact, those cells absorb some of the light uh, before the, it gets to the photoreceptors. So these other layers kind of obscure light a little bit. So the fovea uh, is, is sort of dented like this to maximize the amount of light that actually hits those photoreceptors. Um, another difference in the layout of the retina is the number and types of photoreceptors depending on uh, comparing the central retina to the peripheral retina and their connectivity. So if you look at the central retina, first of all, um, most of the photoreceptors are uh, cone. That means that they are uh, color sensitive. Um, and then the other important thing about the central retina around the fovea is that the photoreceptors are, are only synapsed with a single bipolar cell. So photoreceptors in the central retina are synapsed with just a single bipolar cell, and each bipolar cell synapses with a single retinal ganglion cell. But in the peripheral retina, meaning if you look in the retina further away from the center, you see 
first of all, a greater proportion of rods uh, to cones, and the bipolar cells still are connected to the photoreceptors, but then each photoreceptor, uh, or each retinal ganglion cell, gets its input from multiple bipolar cells. So in fact, if you count up the number of cells per square millimeter across the retina, if you start in the central retina and move to the side, the number of cones, this blue line here, um, peaks right here at the fovea, and the number of rods actually drops to zero uh, near the fovea and then increases as quickly as you go away from the fovea. And then as you move further and further away from the center, the total number of photoreceptors goes down. So your, your visual acuity goes down as you move away from the fovea. Now, of course, there's a big gap here. This is the blind spot. So in the blind spot, there are no photoreceptors at all. So about um, uh, 15 to 20 degrees away from the fovea. The, uh, in the next section, we will talk about phototransduction. Uh, one other important difference about the central retina versus the peripheral retina uh, is that cones, it turns out, are more sensitive to light than rods. They have a higher sensitivity. And we'll get to that later.